What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Controversy here. Sorry for the long hiatus on the upload. I actually had COVID for the past week and I hadn't really been feeling my best, but we are back for another video. And in today's video, we actually got some pretty exciting news on the state of Overwatch and a little bit of an update on matchmaking. The matchmaking has always been kind of a big issue of mine for Overwatch. It's one of the few things that I really don't like about the game, but it looks like maybe they're going to be trying to do a few things to try to fix it, especially upcoming in season four. But in today's video, let's go ahead and go over this blog post that Aaron Keller has left for us to kind of give us a little outside look on the state of Overwatch. Don't forget, if you guys enjoyed today's video, go ahead and smash a like button. Let's go ahead and get right into it. The blog post reads as follows. A few weeks ago, we published the first in a series of updates on the game. It's crazy how much has happened since then. We've launched Overwatch 3, announced a collab with One Punch Man, and now I'm dating Genji. I feel so lucky. That's pretty cringe, but okay. I wanted to dive into two topics today, Season 3 Balance and The Matchmaker. I will say personally that I do feel like the game has been pretty balanced, but let's go ahead and see what they say. We feel that the start of Season 3 is in a much better state of balance than the start of Season 2. This is something I definitely agree with. We hear from players that balance is the best it's been since the launch of Overwatch 2, since the game feels fresh based on all the changes made. It's been great watching that discussion, and to foster it, I'd like to give a bit more details and a bit less commentary. I would definitely say that the changes that they made to like Cassidy and Soldier and even to Mercy have really honestly, in my opinion, made the meta a lot more healthy and it feels a lot more balanced. I do think that there opens up room for a lot more heroes that you can play now viably uh, where you don't feel like you have to always be running Sojourn. The blog is then separated into each role, so we're going to go ahead and go over those one by one. Let's look at the support role first. On the positive side, most supports are viable in nearly every skill tier. Rick has really popped this season and has the highest win rate for nearly all skill tiers except top 500 where Zen takes the lead with both averaging out to nearly 55% win rate. On the other end of the spectrum are Kiriko and Moira at around 45%. This goes to show that heroes with the highest win rates aren't always the heroes that are played the most. This is kind of something that we've always known. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna talk about this later, but Sim has always had like one of the highest win rates. Um, and she's really not picked that much, so that kind of just makes sense. When we look at who is actually being played, the top supports are Ana, Kiriko, and Mercy for nearly all skill tiers until Silver and Bronze. I think he means besides Silver and Bronze, because uh, it continues where Moira becomes picked quite a bit. And honestly, it makes sense, or is very simple support to play, uh, and people kind of if you want to heal bot with someone, it probably is going to be Moira and you could also deal damage with her. So that makes sense. It's counterintuitive that Kiriko has such a high pick rate at the highest levels of play, but such a low win rate. I don't know if he can really substantiate the low win rate. It's 45%. I don't really think that's low. I think he's comparing that to the other heroes. But in reality, if it's 45%, it's not. It's normally never going to be above 50 because Kiriko is being played so much. If she's being played... This played as much that means she's if both teams have one it's going to be a 50 percent win rate and then if you play against a team that has a kiriko and you don't have a kiriko and that kiriko loses then it's it's gonna be below 50 percent um so i don't really know if i would say that it has a low win rate i will say that it is on the lower end but that's because she's being picked more and one of them just has to lose but moving on um Brig has such a high win rate, but a mediocre play rate. While it would be fun to pick on this group, we tend to think that highly skilled players are continuing to pick certain heroes for good reasons, and we're getting additional metrics for maps, team comps, and team fights to try to understand this. If it's fruitful, expect to hear more about it. So basically he's saying uh, we're going to continue to monitor things to see how they're going, and if it's anything that we think that you should know, we will let you know. Now moving on to tanks, and this is kind of one that I'm pretty excited about because for me, tanks have felt pretty balanced for the most part, but let's see what they say. Tanks are in a great spot right now. It's almost hard to pick a bad tank. At the top end, Reinhardt has the highest win rate of tanks for most tiers, reaching about 58% in bronze through platinum. At masters and above, Sigma edges him out and sits at 55% in top 500. Hog is struggling a bit. This makes sense because I believe they said they want to rework him. Even though there are still situations where he can be successful, 
I really think that's probably just going to be against like maybe Ball and Doomfist. But other than that, I would probably just rather have Orisa. Winston and Zarya can perform well at certain ranks. And the rest of the roster is solid across all skill tiers. Wrecking Ball is probably the biggest tank topic of the community right now with takes varying. Some think he's overpowered. Others feel that he's in a good spot. And still others think both and flip flop and back and forth. His win rate is among the top three to four tanks at most tiers and bounces between 51 to 55 percent. His pick rate is lower in the metal ranks, increasing as player skill rises. This makes sense because ball is pretty hard to use and if you're not good with him you're probably not going to play him in the lower ranks by top 500 he is far and away the most picked tank we think that this has enabled other heroes to stand out in the current meta along with wrecking ball but we are keeping an eye on him to make sure that players don't get fatigued by seeing so much of the little guy yeah um when they said it's kind of letting other heroes shine more one i would say definitely is shining more is cassidy i know that whenever i see a ball and i'm playing on cassidy um you can really just delete ball honestly you can uh hit him with your magnate phantom roll him in phantom and he's pretty much gonna die if he has even any, a shred of damage taken if not you know if anyone focuses helps focus him with you he's just gonna get deleted so i think heroes like cassie have honestly shined more i would say tracer has two since ball is being picked more tracer synergizes very well with ball since they're both dive um and they can really help play off of each other um so i i do kind of like that he's playable but he is just a little bit too strong in my opinion now let's go ahead and move on to dps and then we'll go ahead and get into matchmaking there have been some big swings in the damage role there are two stories here from the numbers of perspective dps feels fairly balanced across the board season three has been called the season of hit scan by many of you and possibly the season of cassidy which again kind of just what i was just talking about cassidy is really good right now it makes sense and uh, if you guys want to know how to master cassidy you can check out this guide right here and it'll give you everything you need to know about cassidy but let's go ahead and move forward changes to sojourn as well as buffs to a few other characters have opened up a new set of heroes to play Cassidy, Pharaoh, Widowmaker, and Tracer have all risen in playtime. In fact, Cassidy is the most picked hero by a huge margin at all ranks except top 500. He is tied with Tracer. Around 30% of matches have a Cassidy on both sides. Besides Symmetra, it's harder to talk about the most powerful heroes for DPS at the middle to high ranks. The bands that most damage heroes fall within is between 47 and 53% win rate. Pharaoh, Widow, Tracer, and Sim hover around the top end of that. At low ranks, top heroes by win rate are Symmetra and Torbjorn. This is kind of obvious. It'll always be that way due to how easy they are to use. He even says right here, it's always Symmetra and Torbjorn. In fact, Symmetra typically has the highest win rate in the game for all roles at all ranks except Masters and above. Sombra at the low end of the power did have a significant lift this season and has a win rate around 46 percent at diamond and above okay so now that we've gone over how balanced the game is in terms of heroes in each role let's talk about the matchmaking oh and by the way they are not looking at any sort of balance changes for heroes until the mid-season patch okay so now on to matchmaking we made some big changes to the matchmaker this season our primary goal was to optimize the pairing of players to minimize mmr difference within the specific role for example when making matches we put more emphasis on the dps players on each team being closer to in skill than we do for dps players on one team being evenly matched with tank players on the other team so basically just consider it off of visual ranks even though we know visual ranks and mmr are not the same thing but let's say that you have a plat and a gold dps on the other team they're going to try to match you with against another plat and gold dps what they're not going to try to do is try to match your plat and gold dps to let's say a plat tank that's not really what they're trying to do they're trying to keep it within the role it seems like common sense but i guess they felt the need to clarify that or maybe i just have it wrong um and common sense isn't so common but, but i'm pretty sure that's what they meant when they said it back in a previous blog post we continue with this has worked and matches have been much tighter skill delta between players of the same role meaning that tanks have been getting diff to less and dps has been getting diff less and support and so on although i will kind of disagree I, d I do feel like games started off much closer but it still doesn't really seem like it's working as well as it should there have been some other positive effects to these changes in ranked queue times have dropped and for high school matches they drop significantly 
Average match quality has also risen across the board. Also, matches with longer queue times are typically of higher quality now than they were previously. This is also something that I noticed that uh, whenever my matches were having a shorter queue time, it just really felt very rushed. I'm still feeling that right now. And I feel like whenever the queue time is longer, generally speaking, I'm going to get a much higher quality match versus when they're quick. I, it honestly just feels like it could be a toss up. Previously, the longer the player waited, the looser our restrictions on skill difference could potentially be. This is still true, but the range should be more condensed. So it means apparent or what it sounds like is the longer the player waited, apparently what they did in order to decrease their, their wait time, they would loosen up their, or essentially open up their pool of players that that person could get matched to. So if you were a, a GM player, you, it might try to look for other GM or masters players in top 500. But if you've been queued for so long, that's when it's gonna start throwing, you know, diamonds and maybe even plats in there but it, it still seems like that is already happening still so i'm not really i'm, I'm kind of curious on on how that plan how they plan to change that but from what i've been seeing on twitter it's still already happening however there have been some downsides to these changes some of them unforeseen Q times have risen and unranked a bit, and for groups with large skill differentials, they've risen quite a bit. We've made changes here, and Q times for unranked are already moving lower. We've also heard from players that they are experiencing large win slash loss streaks in the game. To be clear, we don't try to cause these or prevent streaks based on ideal win rate for players. We're studying these reports and we'll share more information when we get it. Now, honestly, as much as I like to give companies and businesses the benefit of the doubt, I think this is just a flat out lie. I do not think this is true. I do not think that they are not trying to force these win rates. They already kind of spilled the beans on this the very first time they dropped their first blog post on the matchmaker where they said they made some changes and now new players win rates jumped up by 20% you can't just grab that 20 from from nowhere it's got to come from somewhere um anyway i've also noticed that whenever i get above 50 percent win rate my when my losses start coming in they just start coming in hot and as soon as i get below 50 percent win rate those wins start cranking up again so i don't think that they are not artificially doing this i i, I can't bring myself to think that just simply based on my own bias because of what I've experienced, my own anecdotal evidence. It doesn't make sense that they're going to make this claim that it doesn't do this when I'm literally living it. But I, I could be wrong. I don't know if you guys are having this problem too. Let me know in the, in the comments down below. But for me, it's happening. Rant over. Let's go ahead and get back to the blog post. The issue that we're hearing most from our players is encountering people from vastly different skill levels in their ranked games. Prior to Season 3, the worst 5% of Grandmaster level matches would have players 7 divisions apart. This sounds like a lot, but let's continue. The equivalent of a Gold 3 to Silver 5. That's, a, in my opinion, a pretty vast difference. I mean, a Silver 5 player is almost a Bronze player, and a Gold 3 is kind of like midway through, almost a Plat, so I, I, don't, I don't know. When we initially shipped 2.3, this leaped to 12 divisions apart or greater. That is crazy. That's crazy. 12 divisions apart. We have made numerous changes since then, and we are making changes almost daily. And now this has been reduced to nine divisions apart. There's just no way that should be happening. So if you are plat one, you're gonna go plat two, three, four, five, and then you're gonna go gold one, two, three, four five so a plat one can get a gold five which is someone who's uh, borderline silver on their team H how is this possible like this this shouldn't be happening so this player that's trying to reach diamond can get cucked by someone who's literally in their game that shouldn't be on there i, I don't know it's, it seems very odd uh we we have additional changes planned for a mid-season patch that will improve this further he ends it with okay that's it talk to you all soon and i'll see you in game I hope I see you in game, buddy. I, I got some things I'd like to do just to take my ink route. No, no, but in all seriousness, um, I'm glad that they are communicating with us. I do really believe that currently the game feels very balanced. It really, I, I like, I, I feel like I'm not really dying to things that I feel as frustrated about. Last season, I really did not like dying to Junkrat or or Widowmaker. 
um and i do feel like I, that is happening a lot less with the changes that they've made in those two of those both of those heroes still feel like they have their place in the game but they're just not overwhelming uh same with sojourn sojourn's play has dropped so much for me in my opinion and i don't really see her as much anymore and she when i do i don't really feel overwhelmed so i like the current state of the game i just really want the matchmaking to be fixed i want it to be fixed i want rank to be fixed i want to have something to grind for and i hope that they change that at the very least at the start of season four mid season if they don't do it i'm, I'm okay with that but at the very least start of season four because you know we're gonna be getting a new support hero and there's gonna be a lot of other great changes coming to the game too so i'm really hoping that's gonna be something that i can look forward to but if you guys enjoyed today's video and you want to come back and see more Overwatch content, go ahead and smash that sub button and make sure you turn on post notifications. Hope you guys all have a great weekend and I will see you guys in the next one.